So today we're talking a little bit about 3D printing safety. Uh, if you're like me and you do a lot of 3D printing, um, this little uh, filter and carbon filter is really gonna help out your project. So when you put these little things inside of your 3D printer enclosure with fans pulling the air through, uh, it's able to pull in any sort of particulate matter through the HEPA filter and then any of VOCs or sort of uh, noxious smells go through this carbon filter. Let's get this back cracked open and see what we're working with here. We've got a few screws we need to undo. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off while we're doing this work. Just one more little hidden one way up here. Listen, oh, there's one hidden way in there. Let's take that little guy out. A little bit of flexing. Okay, so this right here is what was causing us troubles. We had to get up and over that large unit right there to be able to actually tie into our power. So now, We've got our voltage out and our ACs in. So these are the connectors that we can actually tie into here. Our voltage out negative, our voltage out positive. And we've actually got two free ones here that we can tie into. So with the power supply off, let's go ahead and actually get ready to um, install our system here. Got a little bit of insulation to do first. Uh, first, because we're gonna tie into the 12 volt power supply, you wanna make sure that you've got the ability to switch this thing on and off so that you're not just always on. Uh, I've got myself a simple little on off on switch here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to simply wire that in like so. And I'm gonna give it a good clamp down on this point so that I can have my wires up and grab my pliers here so I can really give this a nice good tighten on and we're not going to lose our switch at some point. Okay, so now we got our switch on there nice and tight. Uh, let's go ahead and clip our wires and on mine I'm going to be using yellow and green are going to be my tied here so my white actually doesn't matter. Let's get these little yellow and greens a strip. Let's put our fans in. Now, you have to make sure you're installing this the correct way up, so we want our fans blowing down into our holes here. So I'm gonna grab my fans. I actually need to take these out of this little section there so that we can actually route our fans in down below like so. Because otherwise, we're not gonna have anywhere we can actually route our wire through. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead, wire that down. And uh, now we need to tie all three of these together. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clip these out. Uh, right about there, like so. I'm gonna split these wires out because we actually need to tie onto the red power side for our switch. And tie our power together here, because we need to take this power and solder it onto one half of our switch. And our green side of our switch, put our heat shrink tubing on. Okay. 
And let's go ahead and solder these two sides together here. Now for this next part, we need to get, I'm gonna give myself a little too much core here, uh, but I'm gonna give myself about, I don't know, 30 or 40 centimeters of wire because we need to build a wire and route from this unit through the back to our power supply. So I wanna give myself a little bit more so that I'm not gonna end up short. We'll do the same thing with a ground wire here. Make sure we get the same length. And we'll go ahead and strip this end nice and generous. And we need a little more heat shrink tubing. Let's go ahead and tie our grounds together now. We'll throw our heat shrink on. And we'll do the same thing, but to the yellow side of this switch now. So let's actually screw these fans down now that we've got the proper wiring. We've got our switch in place. I'm gonna get that switch just a little bit tighter on. And then lining these up. I've got about 40 millimeter screws here. I've changed the original design a bit so that these just accept uh, M3 screws as uh, self-tapping instead of as needing a brass insert in the original design, which personally I find a little bit of a pain. So I'm gonna go ahead and just self tap these in because there's not really gonna be much vibrations in my opinion. Well, there's gonna be vibration buttons. Not gonna be enough for what these fans are gonna be producing that we actually need to throw a brass insert in there. I think that's a little bit excessive. This one, make sure you don't over torque these because we are just using that self tapping plastic or plastic as a self tapping screw effectively. Thread, we don't want to over torque it or we're actually going to run out of thread. Okay, let's go mount this in the printer. Now you look at the back of the printer, there's this little L bracket that fits in well with this little L on the bottom of this device. There's also a slot for an M3 screw on the bottom of this. So I have fed the wires through so that they feature this other side of the hole. And then this should just line up nicely in that little slot there. And let's go ahead and put an M3 screw. I'm using an eight millimeter countersunk head here. Now we're going to grab our wires here. We can run them in the back and we'll finish those off on the other side of the printer. So let's go ahead and flip the printer around here. On the other end of these wires I have attached a ring terminal just to make things nice and safe. Now you want to make sure you get your ground and your power laid up properly here. So I'm gonna go ahead and route these through the same point. Now before we go any further, let's double check. We're gonna move these wires out of the way because we don't want these wires to be hitting this point. So what we're gonna do, In the back here, just make sure this looks nice and clean. We're actually going to feed it underneath this point. I should be able to get it nice and snug down the bottom, like so. And I might even pull that down a little bit. Okay, let's go back around. And here is the part we don't want 
to be wiring up. So we're going to take these and make sure they stay out of the way with a zip tie. Make sure these stay well out of the way of that Z axis screw. Get a nice little nip. Yeah, same thing here. Go ahead and just pull them through. And you know what, we could probably just feed them under there. We're just gonna get them out of the way. There we go. That's all right, now before we seal this back up, let's test that uh, nothing's gonna blow. So let's power her on. Bring ourselves back over. Let's check our switch here. Beautiful. And uh, no issues with the bamboo here. We flick this thing on. Let's go ahead and do the reverse order. Put everything back in space. Um, and then we will actually finish up with this mount here. So let's put everything back where we found it. So the last step is actually just to put this filter together. Um, so you're gonna need some uh, charcoal activated pellets. Uh, I recommend acid free. It does a better job of absorbing uh, VOCs than acid wash does. You're also gonna need these little robot vacuum filters. Uh, the specific link is in the description. So uh, the designer of this has done a wonderful job with laying everything out. Uh, you use these little neodymium magnets in the corners to be able to hold everything in. Uh, same thing, he's got all the print settings that you need, or she actually, I'm not sure um, who designed it. Uh, I'll have the link there below. They have all the scrims you'll need to be able to do that. Um, this is the little carbon mag, or carbon magazine they call it. This is where you're gonna put the activated charcoal parts into. There's a little line that they have designed here that shows you how far up you should put your carbon pellets in. So let's go ahead and do that. Care for getting this stuff on your hands. It, uh, it's quite dusty. Now with these, you're gonna to wanna to replace the carbon every one to two months, depending on how long you let it sit for because activated carbon kinda of runs out after a little while, which is why you also want to store it in a sealed container so that it's not absorbing sort of passive VOCs. Some people like to do it by number of hours as well, by how many hours you're printing and what kind of materials you are firing through there. Um, so it could be kind of an either or, bit of a uh, bit of a, kind of like an oil change in your car. So I'll pop that last piece of carbon that I missed in there. And that slides inside the carbon magazine like that, pretty slick. And then your HEPA filter goes on top, make sure you use this little tag at the top part there so that it is easy to remove, but then again, you could really just push the bottom. So now I say that doesn't actually matter. That clips on like top, and then you have your nice little unit on top there. And if we were to go put this inside, like so, these, just go ahead and clip on top, slides in place, and flick on our fan. And we've got a nice, wonderfully functioning air filter to be able to pull in a lot of VOCs from there. And we can actually feel it's got quite a bit of, uh, quite a bear there. So hopefully that makes your air a little bit cleaner. Um, again, you should change that HEPA filter every so often. The HEPA filter itself is not near as important as the VOCs for the carbon uh, is here. 
Uh, so I hope that makes your project a little bit safer. Uh, I hope it makes your life a little bit safer, actually. And uh, best of luck on your next project.